well let me, let me just uh, rename it fs focus scan all right so uh initial condition we let's keep them uh, the grid let's keep it to be the same initial guess let's keep it to be to be the same and the uh, new consideration well let me just uh, take x equal to x0 to be here right so i mean let me just uh, make x equal to that so it's just the initial condition new consideration okay now let's define my a to be let's first make sure a equal to zero we are going to get the same uh solution so my dg dx depends on a my g depends on a but anything else should be the same right right okay so dg dx dg dx only this discretized the actual equation the others are definition of fp and fpp so they don't have to change the boundary condition is the same so only this one has to have an a okay and this one i need an a in it uh so before we modify the gradient let's look at the actual residual so it needs the a here and the first needs the a so so let's also let's first modify this equation how do we modify that first we have a one plus a in the f times fpp so uh let's put a one plus a here all right so that's the approximation to f times fpp right okay and but then there is a additional let's say fs term the fs term is this additional one it's one minus fp squared times a so we have a times well this needs a a times what one minus uh, remember this equation is an approximation in the middle of the grid in between two grids so again let's use trapezoidal rule to approximate f square so, so not f square fp square so fp uh, 1 to n minus 1 square i need to have half fp 2 to n square divided by 2 that's my new term right okay plus fs term. that's it okay that's my modification in the ga now i want to also differentiate this new term to differentiate this new term first of all i need this factor of one plus a inside which lines i think here right so that is a that is a differentiation of the one plus a term and i think this is also a differentiation of the one plus a term otherwise i think uh, they are the same now we also have the additional term we called fs term that is going to give us a non-zero contribution in which matrix which are the matrices we need to modify to account for the one minus fp square term So this is the derivative of the equation with respect to f this is the derivative of the equation with respect to fpp we introduced another term that only depends on what fp right fp1 one, one minus fp square so this is this equation is no longer zeros okay so let's copy our construction here it's still going to be bi diagonal right so let's copy the construction here and uh, we don't have the one plus a anymore it's just uh, okay but we have a minus a times right because because we have a, a a times and it's a minus sign and if i differentiate this fp divide by two i just get fp right I differentiate fp squared divided by two i get fp so so this is uh fp 
and I don't have to divide by 2. I don't have 1 plus a, I have fp, and I don't have to divide by 2. I think that's it. I think that's all the modification we need to do on the on the Blasius equation to get a Faulkner scan solver. So let's first uh, uh, get the same initial condition and the wrong Newton's relation. Let's actually, let me actually, I want to plot, uh, I want to print out the residual, how the residual decreases. So, so let's see, residual is equal to g, because if g is equal to zero, I know the equation is satisfied, right? And uh, every time I want to display the norm of the residual. Okay, the norm of uh, a vector is basically a quantification of how big the vector is. If the norm is zero, that means the whole vector is zero. So let's try this. Uh, Da, 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 da. Uh, too many input arguments. Oh, DGDX, I forgot to put in. Oh, yeah, I forgot to put in A. Okay, so let's try again. Oh, okay, this time it runs. And uh, we can see that residual go f goes from 4 to 26 to 5 to 0 0.6 to 0 0.01. 10 minus 5, 10 minus 12. So that's the typical convergence of the Newton's relation. So once it starts to converging, it's really fast. Now let's try a equal to 0.5. See how it works. Okay, still, you see, this is the last time. Now, because I changed the a, initially it has a big residual, and now it converges again really fast. Where's my solution? Okay, my solution is here. So now, what is the effect of a positive a? Previously, we said that eta equal to 1 corresponds to 0.4, right? Now it corresponds to something a lot faster. The boundary layer got thinner. Thinner? Thinner. Thinner, right. Yeah. A positive a means the ue increases or decreases as a function of X increases. increases. Yeah. What kind of pressure gradient do we have? Favorable, Favorable pressure gradient. It thinks the boundary layer. Yeah. Okay, let's try it another way. How about minus? Let's run it. It did not converge. Okay? <laughs> did not converge. So we did something. I mean, of course, we get a non converging solution. So we did something too aggressive. So let's try something slightly less aggressive. Minus 0.1. Okay, we get a thicker boundary layer. Now, eta equal to 1 is now... Uh, and also, we, don't, we see that the curvature is not monotonic anymore, right? So you get a negative curvature here. Let's try something even more aggressive. Did I converge? No, I didn't converge. So this is also too much. Hmm? If it doesn't converge, it means there is no. Uh, we we didn't find a st stable solution, right? So it's uh, it's hard to say it doesn't have a solution, but uh, it's, at least it's very difficult to find. So we tried. Uh, well, it doesn't converge all the way anymore, but like, uh, still doesn't converge all the, all the way. But like you, you find uh, this solution seems to be separating, right? So can we try. increase the number of iterations to make it higher? To see if it okay, sure. That's a good point. So you said the one five. I'm going to try another one. Now it converged, right? And the solution looks like that. So what does this mean? In this, the it's UE goes reverse. negative, right? Reverse flow. It's a reverse flow for a portion of the boundary layer. So that's a that's a separated solution. So, so that happens when my, I take my a to be negative, like negative 1.5. And remember, a is a ratio of alpha over theta. So theta is the rate of growth of the y scale in the, uh, as x increases. And uh, uh, alpha is the rate of growth of the ue as x increases. So a negative a means a uh, negative alpha, so that's basically saying that the, the ex external flow decelerates as I increase in the x 
direction, right? So that's an adverse pressure gradient. 